Since we now, for the first time in the last two, three, four years, have treatment that is working so much better, we have novel combinations which are reducing the amount of the myeloma to complete responses and even better, we need this more sensitive technology to assess are we doing a fantastic job, a really good job, or maybe a complete job. Maybe there are in fact no myeloma cells left. There is a new method based on flow cytometry. The method is proven to be better than what is there to be easily to standardize and to use in different labs. So this is like presenting the method to the most important labs around the world. What has been misunderstood is that this needs to be done in a very careful way. Here for bone marrow samples, where you will have here like erythroid. Uh... There are a lot of technical details uh, to this flow cytometry method. The attendees need to have hands-on experience. How do you actually process the sample? What are the little details in uh, adding the liquid, setting up the flow methods, preparing the cells, and then uh, putting the cells through the machine? And then, once the results start to come, how do you trigger the machine to start analyzing the data? For that specific channel, and then the numbers below, uh... And the end result is an automated cell identification. The computer is able to identify all the cells that are on that cell suspension. And then every cell, every single cell from those 5 million cells or more is classified as normal or abnormal. In order to do that, you need to feed the computer with huge data sets, references of either normal and pathological samples. The goal of this meeting is that this methodology will be adopted by labs around the globe. We can then have the chance to have standardization of trials, trials to compare one treatment against another, clinical trial comparison, but also the development of trials which use the individual information to say, okay, we have some MRD, we have some myeloma left. If we add in some new treatment, we can push harder and achieve MRD zero. Then the patients in one country can even profit from all the knowledge from another country. So you can exchange information between countries, even between different treatment protocols, and understand which treatment is the best. It's not only important for the individual patient, which is tremendous, but also to have a new endpoint for drug development. As treatment gets better, it takes longer and longer to see if one treatment is better than another. We have results where patients can be in remission for six years, for eight years, for 10 years. We can't wait that long to see if one treatment is better than another. Studying resistant subclones. Uh, if we want as doctors to come up with a better treatment. This is a tool that is very powerful. This is an important first step towards um, having a standard where you know, um, most people can apply and, and where all subsequent methods you need to be kind of compared against. It's a turning point, I think, for the disease in terms of uh, how we're going to approach the disease with, with the new therapies as well as how do we alter the therapies based on the results of the initial treatments. We need to have a sensitive evaluation of the response to identify the patients who are really cured from disease and so we need to have something sensitive to detect something like uh, one uh, plasma cells in one million of uh, bone marrow cells. For the Black Swan Research Initiative, this is really uh, tremendous. This for us is the key first step that we need to move forward and develop treatments that can provide the benefit that we want to see, to cure some patients, to provide better quality of life for all of our patients and to control the disease for some patients, uh, maybe work harder for a few other patients. But for all patients, we can have a plan.